let me know if you can see. You cannot see me, right? Father, a voice test. Okay. Um, the lesson is written in the first book of Moses called Genesis in the first chapter beginning at the 18th verse. Uh, was that voice clear? Rory, was the voice clear from Father Gary? Yeah, sorry for the one more. Uh, first lesson is written, the first book of Moses called Genesis in the 22nd chapter, beginning at the first verse. Sure, sure. Too close now. Okay. I'm taking it back. I'm taking the thing back. No? Is that okay? Okay. No, he's actually now uh, gone. So then it's it's taking a few. Yeah. Test, test, test. Testing sound. Uh, testing sound, testing sound. Okay, perfect. So, uh, I think I've got the position of the uh, laptop. Okay, but Father Garrett will be sitting in that uh, chair there, except for a small part when he will go up into the altar. Yeah. And then... And Yeah, it's, it's brought out from the wall.
No, no, now, now I have set it uh, without the stairs. Yeah, I think we have almost at ten, so I think we'll have to start early. He's sitting, he's sitting in the seat now, he had to get up to just uh, finish up the... Okay. Okay, done. Is it good? Okay. Okay. Perfect. So good to start. So we start in Jolly. Thank you. have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid in him the iniquity of us all. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places. We acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness. We should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, it ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together, render thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands, set forth his most worthy praise to hear his most holy word, bless those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart, with 
humble voice under the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. According to thy promises, declare unto mankind in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life in the glory of thy holy name. Amen. <laughs> Mighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, thou desirest not the death of a sinner, but rather he may turn from his wickedness and live. Give it power and commandment to his ministers to declare, pronounce to his people being penitent, the absolution or remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and that feignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit. Those sins may please him, which we do at this present, the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouths shall show forth thy praise. God may speak to save us. And the Lord may case to help us. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Christ our Lord became obedient unto death. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in the songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his that he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. For your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Four years long was I freed for that generation, and said, it is the people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my Christ our Lord became obedient unto death. O come, let us worship. Good Friday anthems on page 173. Read in unison, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Here it is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength, and honor and glory and blessing. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I'm so far from my help, and from, and from the words of my complaint. For my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season also I take no rest. And thou continuest holy. O thou worship of Israel. The fathers trusted in thee. They trusted in thee, and thou didst deliver them. Called upon thee, and were saved. They put their trust in thee, and were not confounded. 
But as for me, I am a worm and no man. A very scorn of men and the outcast of the people. Well, they that see me laugh me to scorn. They, they shoot, shoot out their lips and shake their heads. Saying he trusted in God that he would deliver him. Let him then deliver him, him if he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me from the womb. Thou wast my hope when I hanged yet upon my mother's breasts. I have been left unto thee ever since I was born. Thou art my God, even from my mother's womb. Go not from me, for trouble is hard at hand. And there is none to help me. Many oxen are come about me. Strong bulls of Bashan come to me in on every side. They gape upon me with their mouths. As it were a ramping and a roaring lion. I have poured out like water, and all my bones are of a joy. My heart also, in the midst of my body, is even like melting wax. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, my tongue cleaveth to my gums. And thou bringest me into the dust of death. For many dogs are come about me. And the counsel of the wicked lay the siege against me. They pierce my hands and my feet, and they count all my bones. They stand staring and looking upon me. Part my garments among them, and cast, and cast lots upon my vesture. Be not thou far from me, O Lord. Thou art my succor. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, and my and life from the power of the dark. Save me from the lion's mouth. Thou hast Mr. heard me from also from the among the hordes of the wild oxen. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Praise the Lord, ye that fear. Magnify him, all ye of the seed of Jacob, and stand in all of him, all ye seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the low estate of the poor. He hath not hid his face from him, but when he called upon him, he heard him. Of thee cometh my praise in the great congregation. My woes will I perform in the sight of them that fear me. Or shall eat and be satisfied. They that seek after the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember. He turned unto the Lord. And all the twin kingdoms of the nations shall worship before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's. And he is the governor among the nations. Surely to him shall all the proud of the earth bow down. And before him shall kneel all that go down into the dust. And he that cannot keep his soul alive, their posterity shall serve them. It shall be told of the Lord unto a generation yet to come. And men shall declare his righteousness. Unto a people that shall be born, that he had done it. First lesson is written in the First book of Moses called Genesis in the 22nd chapter, beginning at the first verse. God does not require Abraham to sacrifice his son, neither does he make us to sacrifice our children. Instead, God takes the entire responsibility for our salvation on himself. He gives up his own son for sacrifice. We are required to put our entire lives at his disposal and to trust in him as Abraham did. Today we think about the sacrifice of God the Son. Let us pray that we may be so filled with God's grace that our hearts may burn with love for him in response to the love that he has shown towards us. Christ is the Lamb that God has provided for the sacrifice. We now understand the great meaning of John the Baptist's words when he first saw our Lord. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, he said, Behold, here I am. He said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. He clave the wood for the burnt offering, rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, 
Abide here with the axe, and I and my dad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son. He took the fire in his hand and a knife. They went both of them together. But Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? But Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. They came to a place which God had told them of. Abraham built an altar there, laid the wood in order, bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. But Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, Here am I. He said, lay, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. But now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. But Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. Behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. The angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, that because thou hast done this thing, hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. Thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. But in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Here endeth the first lesson. We read in unison, so badly. O Savior of the world, who by thy cross and precious blood has redeemed us, Save us and help us, we come humbly to seek thee, O Lord. Thou didst save thy disciples when ready to perish. Hear us and save us, we humbly to seek thee, O Lord. Let the pitifulness of thy great mercy lose us from our sins, we humbly to seek thee. Make it appear that thou art our Saviour and mighty Deliverer. O save us that we may praise thee, we be humbly beseech thee. Draw near according to thy promise from the throne of thy glory. Look down and hear our crying. We humbly beseech thee. Come again and dwell with us, O Lord Christ Jesus. Abide with us forever. We humbly beseech thee. And when thou shalt appear with power and great glory, may we be made like unto thee in thy glorious kingdom. The second lesson was written in the Gospel according to St. John, the 18th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Oh, our hearts should grieve when we read what is done to our Lord. It should grieve us even more when we think what we through our sins have done to Christ. We not betrayed him as Judas did. We not denied him as Peter did. We not refused to believe in him as Pilate did. And through all of our sin, doubt, and denial, our Lord has refused to abandon us. But he accepts his betrayal, arrest, and crucifixion, so that we may be forgiven for our sins. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the book Kedron, where it was a garden, into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, who betrayed him, knew the place. But Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth, said unto them, 
Whom seek ye? They said unto him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with him. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, he went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he, then, then asked he him then again, Whom seek ye? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. And Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? And the band and the captains and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him. And led him away to Annas first, who was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the place of the high priest. Peter stood at the door without, and went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. They warmed themselves. Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples, of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. They ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me, that I have said what I have said unto them. Hold they know what I said. When he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by the by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest. Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. He said therefore unto him, Art thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again. And immediately caught crew. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas into the hall of judgment. It was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went up unto them and said, What accusation bring ye again against this man? They answered and said unto him, If you were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. And said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him 
all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Lord, be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Mighty God, we beseech thee graciously. Behold this thy family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was contented to be betrayed, given up to the hands of wicked men, to suffer death upon the cross, who now liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, the one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by the Spirit, the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before thee for all the saints of men in thy holy Church. Every member of the same in his vocation and ministry, we truly and God be served, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Merciful God, who has made all men, it is nothing that thou hast made. For what is the death of a sinner? But rather that he should be converted and live. Have mercy upon all who reject and deny thy Son. Take from them all ignorance, hardness of heart, and contempt of thy word. So fetch them home, as it were, by four. They may be made one flock under one shepherd, which is Christ our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without it. Amen. The epistle is written in the tenth chapter of the epistle to the Hebrews, beginning at the first verse. The law of Moses, having as it were a shadow of good things which were to come, but not the very image of those things, and never with those sacrifices which they offered continually, year by year, Make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, since the worshippers, once they had been purified, should have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, remembrance of sins is made over again every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. For an offering and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. And said I, will I come, the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above what he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, an offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein which are offered according to the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Take it away the first, that he may establish the second, by the which, by the which will we are sanctified, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Every priest standeth daily in his ministry, offering many times those same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from henceforth till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one single offering he hath perfected forever those who are sanctified, whereof the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us. For after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them, after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts. In their minds will I write them. Then saith he, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, having an high priest over the house of God, 
Let's draw it near with a true heart, full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. He is faithful, that promise. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love, and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. So much the more as you see the day approaching. Here endeth the epistle. <clears throat> Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man, preserve me from the wicked man. Who imagine mischief in their hearts and, and stir up strife all the day long. They are sharp with their tongues like a serpent, and his poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the ungodly. And, and preserve me from, from the wicked men who have purposed to overthrow thy goings. The proud have laid a snare for thee, and spread the net abroad with cords, yea, yea and set traps in my way. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God, hear the voice of my prayers of O Lord, Lord God, thou strengthened my help, thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. But not the ungodly have his desire, O Lord, not his mischief. Mischievous imagination prosper, lest they be too proud. Let, Let the mischief of their, their own lips fall upon the head of them that they pass about that. The righteous also shall give thanks unto thee, unto thy name. And the just shall continue in thy sight. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king, king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee out of me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, but I should not be delivered to the Jews. Now my kingdom is not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born and came into the world, that I should witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, what, what is true? When he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all, but ye have a custom that I should release unto you at one of the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then said they all again, said, Not this man, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a rock. And Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. The soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put on him a purple robe and came unto him and said, Hail, King, King of the Jews. Jews. They smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, Behold I, bring I bring him forth to you, that, that ye may know that, that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. When the, chief, then the, when the chief priests therefore and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die. Because, because he had made, made himself the Son of God. And Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and said unto Jesus, Whence art thou? Jesus gave him no answer. And said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. 
and then swore Pilate sought to release him. The Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever make himself a king, speaketh against Caesar. Pilate therefore heard that saying, and brought Jesus forth, sat down in the judgment seat, in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was the preparation of the Passover, in about the sixth hour. He sat under the Jews. Behold, Behold your king. king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, him. crucify him. him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? Chief priests answered, we have no king but a Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore under them to be crucified. He took Jesus and led him away. Bearing his cross went forth to a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. They crucified him. And two others with him on the other side one, and Jesus in the midst. I that wrote a title, put it on the cross, the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. His title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. It was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier of part, and also his coat. And the coat was with outseam woven from the top throughout. He said, therefore, among themselves, Let, Let us not rent it, it, but the cast lots for it. Whose it shall be? These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, his mother's sister. Mary, the wife of Clovis, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciple standing by, whom he loved, saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. And he was set a vessel full of vinegar. They filled a sponge with vinegar, put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. He bowed his knee, he gave up his spirit. The Jews, therefore, because it was a preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath was in high day, they sought Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. The soldiers therefore came, break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. Forthwith came there out blood and water. And he saw that it bore witness, and his witness is true. He knoweth that he said true, that he might believe. For if these things were done, that the scriptures should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again the scripture saith, They shall look on him whom they pierced. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. He hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. I've learned over the years as a priest that we tend to remember what those especially dear to us, our family and friends, said and did to the point when they died. The last moments are recounted in every detail by those who were there. She looked over, smiled, then turned her head away, just stopped breathing. Took one last breath, 
a big deep one. That was it. These are the things we recall. These are the scenes which were played in our minds in grief. When pain unveils reality and reveals the face of love. When our Lord Jesus was near the point of death, those who loved him heard his final words before dying. These two of his seven words, his last sayings upon the cross, were words from the Psalms. The Psalter, as we call the Book of Psalms, was essentially the hymn book of God's people. Sometimes, like Paul and Silas, beaten and shamed in the prison dungeon, people sing hymns while under great hardship and trial. But when you approach the suffering, complete exhaustion of Jesus, struggling for each breath on the cross, you don't sing. But you may cling to what is most familiar and comforting. We are too tired to think, especially if those words perfectly express the agony you're going through. Psalms are considered the word of God. So it is not surprising that Jesus recited them. In fact, it sounds exactly like what he would do. In the most profound sense, those words are his. Eloi, Eloi, Lamb of Sabbath, Kandy. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, says Jesus. These are the words which begin the 22nd Psalm. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? Fathers trusted in me, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out their lips, they shake their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, he would deliver him. Pierce my hands and my feet, they tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them, cast lots upon my vesture. A little further in the psalm, we hear these remarkable words. He has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard him. Isaiah wrote, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. He hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. We're told that when Jesus said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? spoke those words as he had learned them. I was taught to give him what, what I was told was the Hebrew pronunciation, Eloi, Eloi, Lama, Sabbath, Tani. You must remember, though, that Jesus grew up in the Galilean provinces and spoke Aramaic. Never forget the first time I heard a Lebanese woman who was born and raised in Cairo read those words. I remember thinking how easy it would have been for those standing there to hear him say, Eli, Eli. I think he was calling for Eli, the prophet Elijah. We're told further that some who heard what they thought was a cry to Elijah were moved to give him a drink. Others said, now well, let's see whether Elijah comes to help him. You see, cruelty, in the form of curiosity, twisted minds of hollow men, look to be entertained in the arena of the world, of the pain and suffering of others. We also have what sounds exactly like the sort of vivid, messy detail you might expect to hear from loved ones who were there and saw what they saw and heard what they heard. In his first epistle, General St. Peter writes of our Lord Jesus, who bore our sins in his own body on the tree. This is one of several instances in which the cross of Jesus is called a tree. What is being brought to mind here is the law of God in the book of Deuteronomy. The man guilty of a capital offense is put to death. If his body is hung on a tree, he must not leave his body on the tree overnight. Be sure to bury him that same day, because anyone who is hung on a tree is under God's curse. This is what Jesus was referring to, what St. Paul was referring to, rather, in his letter to the Galatians, when he wrote, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree, suspended between heaven and earth, as if not fit to be received by either, condemned to pay the full price of judgment, our Lord paid the full price of our sins. By him, once and for all, our great debt has been paid in full. Heaven were a place and not beyond space and time. 
It's only when asked to see your papers in order to establish by what possible merits you belong there. They would find that you are walking the streets of glory. <clears throat> by the very merits of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Same merits by which all of God's children find their way home. In fact, your photo ID is a mirror, which when looked upon in heaven, reveals the face of Christ. Reject you, they must reject him. For a heavenly birth certificate, as it were, has been signed and sealed in the blood of Christ. Christ, you are more than a guest in the New Jerusalem, or a citizen, has been made a beloved son, heir of the kingdom. As we observed that in John's Gospel, our Lord Jesus speaks of his death as an exaltation, lifting up, which draws all people to him. And of course, we re remember how Jesus taught us that exaltation and humility belong together, the same moment, the same movement of the soul, as the same movement of the soul. Whoever humbles himself shall be exalted, says Jesus, who is leader of the feast, becomes the most menial servant washes the feet of the disciples he calls friends. The exaltation of the cross is the lifting up of sacrifice, of the surrender in which all resistance is overcome, a complete oblation, a perfect offering for sin, and not for our sins only, but the sins of the whole world. The death of Jesus on the cross concludes a faithful life, singular, particular obedience, perfect life, perfectly expressed by the words from Psalm 31, which Jesus addresses to his Father. He says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He began his ministry being tempted in the dry and lonely desert, where he refused to use his relation to his Father to serve his own needs, where he would not subject his Father to any test, and where he was offered to turn down all the riches and all the kingdoms and all the world because he remained faithful to his Father. His whole life was an offering of love to his Father. The cross, where he was lifted up, we see that love made visible. His love for the Father and his love for us. He shows us that love it is infinitely more than a passing experience. It is eternal. It has no opposite. It is what allows all opposites to be. It is the fundamental nature of reality. Love is what is left when everything else passes away. His wounds proclaim his love. The 49th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, the Lord declares, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. We write something on the palms of our hands because it is so urgently important that we must not forget. I have engraved you on the palms of my hands, says the Lord. One Good Friday sermon, the 17th century Bishop Lancelot Andrews says, He was pierced with love no less than with grief. It was that wound of love, made him so constantly to endure all the other, which love we may read in the palms of his hands. For in the palms of his hands he hath graven us, that he might not forget us. In the print of the nails in them, or as the capital letters, to record his love towards us. For Christ pierced on the cross is the very book of love laid open before us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 which was hung the Savior of the world. O God, let us worship. Faithful cross above all other, one and only noble tree, one in foliage, one in blossom, one in fruit thy peers may be. Sweetest wood, sweetest iron, sweetest weight is hung upon thee.
O oh, my people, what have I done to thee? To thee? Or wherein have, have I wearied thee? Answer, Answer me. Because I led thee out of the land of Egypt, thou hast prepared a cross for thy sin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy, holy and mighty, have mercy, mercy upon us. Because I led thee through the desert forty years, fed thee with man, brought thee into a land exceeding good, thou hast prepared a cross for thy Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal, have mercy upon us. What could I have done for thee that I have not done? I planted thee indeed, my choice is fine. Thou hast turned for me into exceeding bitterness to me. Thou gavest vinegar to me. Quench my thirst, here's with a lance the side of thy Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. For thy sake I scourged Egypt with its firstborn. Thou hast delivered me up to be scourged. O my people, what have I done for thee? O verily have I buried thee? Answer me. I led thee out of Egypt, down in Pharaoh in the Red Sea, Thou didst deliver me to the chief priest. O my people, what have I done to thee? O wherein have I buried thee? Answer me. I opened the sea before thee, and thou openest my side with a spear. O my people, what have I done to thee? O wherein have I buried thee? Answer me. I went before thee in a pillar of cloud, and thou ledest me before Pilate's judgment seat. O my people, what have I done to thee? O very have I buried thee. Answer me. I fed thee with manna in the desert, thou hast fallen me with swords and staves. O my people, what have I done to thee? O very have I buried thee. Answer me. I gave thee the drink of the water of salvation from the rock, it gave us me gall and vinegar. O my people, what have I done to thee? O oh, where have I buried thee? Answer me. For thee I smote the kings of the Canaanites, thou didst smite my head with a reed. O oh, my people, what have I done to thee? O oh, where have I buried thee? Answer me. I gave thee a royal scepter, nor gave us my head a crown of thorns. O oh, my people, what have I done to thee? O oh, where have I buried thee? Answer me. I exalted thee to great honor, thou didst lift up, lift me up upon the gibbet of the cross. O my people, what have I done to thee? O wherein have I buried thee? Answer me. Psalm 88. O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer enter into thy presence. Incline thine ear unto my calling. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life I draw a lie unto the grave. I have counted as one of them that go down into the pit. I am even as a man that hath no strength, like one cast forth among the dead, like the slave that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in places of darkness and in the deeps. Thine indignation lies hard upon me. And thou hast vexed me with all thy songs. Thou hast put away my acquaintance far from me. And hast made me to the abode of them. I am so fast in prison that I cannot get forth. My slight sight calleth for very trouble. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched forth my hands unto thee. As thou show wonders for the dead. Or shall the dead rise up and praise thee? Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave? O oh, thy faithfulness in destruction. Shall thy wondrous works be made known in the dark? And the righteousness in the land where all things are forgotten. To thee have I cried, O Lord. And only shall my prayer come before thee. Lord, why abhorrest thou my soul? 
and hidest thou my face, thy face from me. O my youth up, I am in misery, ready to die. Thy terrors have I suffered with a troubled mind. A wrathful displeasure goeth over me, and the fear of thee hath undone me. It came round about me like water all the day long, and compassed me together on every side. My lovers and friends hast thou put away from me. And I hid mine and make acquaintance out of thy sight. First lesson is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 50th chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. In these words, Jesus himself is speaking. Read this lesson slowly and thoughtfully to yourself. Jesus was obedient, though obedience required that he should suffer shame and humiliation, full of trust and confidence in the infinite love and care of his Father in heaven. With God, we do not need to fear anything. The condemnation of man is meaningless in light of the obedience of Christ. It calls us to give up trusting in our own abilities to place our trust in the Lord. Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning, he wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. Lord God hath opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. The Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore will I set my face like a flint. I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near you. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Though they all shall wax old as a garment, the moth shall eat them up. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord, that stay upon his God. Here end the verse lesson. My soul hath magnified the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud of the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seed. And hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent them to the way. He remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham, and his seed forever. Second lesson is written, the Gospel according to St. John, the 19th chapter, beginning at the 38th verse. Christ is crucified. The Son of God is dead. In these verses we read of his burial. His body is anointed with myrrh. At this, we are reminded of the presentation of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the Lord in the stable at Bethlehem. Now the purpose for which Christ had come to earth has been accomplished. From the very moment of his birth, he was prepared to suffer death upon the cross for our sins. Now that he has died, we must give thanks this night for what he has done. Good Friday, we remember that on this day, our sins were canceled by Jesus' death. Let's take some time this evening and consider that God loves us so much that he went to the extent of allowing his only son to die so that we might live. Now after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, he sought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore to the body of Jesus. There came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night. He brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. 
and took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen cloths with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. In the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. In the garden, a new sepulchre, wherein was never a man yet laid. There lay they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day. The sepulchre was nigh at hand. Here endeth the second lesson. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. According, According to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. 